GPS navigation is supposed to make your life easier, but there are the oddball situations where things would be easier done with a pair of old narco VORs. Hey, I'm Jeff Van West, reporting for IFR Magazine and AvWeb, and today we're going to look at some of the tricks for VOR navigation when you're using a Garmin 430 or 530 GPS. Suppose you're being vectored away from Boeing Field near Seattle, and you get the clearance. Fly heading 180, intercept Victor 2, then resume on navigation. Sure, you can tune a VOR and watch your CDI, but you can't see that route on your map or MFD. You could use bearing pointers, or the bearing to a VOR, shown on the GNS 530. But how do you handle this with just one GPS? First off, you have to know where Victor 2 is. Given the clearance, there's a good chance it's already in your flight plan. Here, Victor 2 is the leg between the Seattle VOR and the Yakima VOR. So what do we have to do to get this Garmin GNS 430 to sequence along that leg when we intercept it? Nothing. It'll actually do it on its own. As soon as the airplane comes close enough to that leg, it should resequence. Then you can turn on your autopilot and have it follow along the rest of your flight plan. If for some reason it doesn't reactivate, what you need to do is manually activate the leg. To do that, go to the flight plan page, select the Yakima VOR, and press Menu. Activate leg should come up as the option. Enter, enter, and the leg is active. Now, on an earlier video, a number of people wrote in and mentioned that another way to activate the leg is to scroll to the waypoint, press Direct, and then Direct again, and then Enter. Same number of button pushes. I find that teaching people to use the Garmin menus opens their eyes to other features that hide inside menus, but Direct, Direct, and Enter is a fine shortcut as well. Speaking of direct, suppose your clearance was something like Intercept the Cedar Lake 200 radial to join Victor 16, then on course. Now Cedar Lake, or VCN, was on the flight plan, as well as Victor 16, but that random radial sure wasn't. And sure, you could dial up the VOR, go to VLOC mode, go to the OBS and get yourself on course that way. But there's a better way to do it using GPS. Most people would do a direct to VCN, and then hit activate, go to OBS mode, and then you could dial up the 200 radial so you would see it on the moving map and you'd see it on your CDI. The trick to remember is that you can actually turn off OBS mode after you've done this. The direct path that you had created with OBS will remain. You can intercept that course, fly to Cedar Lake, and then your flight plan will resequence just as before along Victor 16. Your autopilot can even fly it for you. You can do this all in one step by doing a direct to Cedar Lake, but instead of doing just a regular direct and then OBS mode, scroll down before you hit enter to course and dial in 020. That is the 200 radial, but to the VOR. And then hit enter and activate. What this does is it puts a direct on the screen but it puts it on that 200 radial. You can then intercept it, fly inbound, and continue on your way. Stepping it up a notch, there's the clearance to intercept a radial from a VOR you've never heard of and ride that radial to pick up an airway where no named intersection exists. Something like, uh... Fly heading 010, intercept the Colts Neck 065 to join Victor 16, then on course. This one can be easier to just hack with two nav radios, but it can be done on the fly with one GPS. First, you have to find the VOR. Sometimes that's easiest done via the nearest VOR page. Next, our direct to on course trick won't work because we're flying outbound from the VOR, so we'll use OBS mode and dial the outbound radial. Our autopilot still should be able to capture and fly this outbound course. This will get you halfway there, as you can find that radial and turn. Now the trick is to add a waypoint where this radial crosses Victor 16, which you'll note has disappeared from our screen due to the OBS mode. The solution is a user waypoint. Scroll all the way to the end of the waypoint group, and then turn that inner knob to start labeling a user waypoint. We'll just call it A. It doesn't really matter what you call it because you're going to delete it later when you're done. Once you've done that, hit enter. The GPS will automatically call up two relevant VORs 
and two radials from those VORs. Now one of them was Colt's neck, which we needed, so we'll dial in the 065 radial off of Colt's neck. Now we could define it with a distance, but we actually know it off the chart from another VOR. It's the JFK 221 radial. We'll hit enter to create that, and now the user waypoint exists. Now we can go to the flight plan page, get a cursor, and scroll down to JFK. Turn the inner knob to insert a new waypoint and dial back to A, the waypoint we created. Hit enter. That's our user waypoint. We'll accept it. And now it's in our flight plan. Now the last step is going to be to turn off OBS mode and head direct to that waypoint A. So we'll push direct. We'll scroll down to the flight plan window in the direct, turn the inner knob and scroll in our flight plan to A. Press enter and activate. And now we're headed outbound to that A waypoint. Now the cool part about this is because we were outbound on the radial, when we did a direct to A, the course didn't change. But what's going to happen is when we reach that waypoint that we created, which is where the radial we're on intersects Victor 16, we'll be able to continue on course with the flight plan auto sequencing and the GPS if we want can lead the autopilot through the whole thing. Which gives us more time to look out the window. Always a good idea when flying through New York airspace. I'm Jeff Van West for IFR Magazine and AvWeb. Thanks for watching.